Now the Berians were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. O oh my soul, let us protect our church. O oh my soul, let us protect our church. O oh my soul, let us protect our church. God, who is full of grace and mercy, today we have come to you to worship you and we have come to you in obedience. We thank you that we are be able to give you this worship. We pray that we may continue to protect and keep this church. And we pray. We pray we may continue to obey your commands. We give you glory and honor during this worship. We pray that you, who are spirit, that we may, in accordance with this, give you the worship in the spirit and in the truth. We pray earnestly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During this time of repentance, let us come to God, let us confess all our sins and our faults before Him, let us cleanse our spirits, let us uh, confess and repent of all those things within our spirits to cleanse ourselves, let us pray to God in repentance right now.
힘을 받고자 하오니 저들을 도와주시옵시고 인도해 주시기 원합니다. 육신을 갖고 있는 터라 저들의 마음속에 여러 가지로 이렇게 하나님을 떠난 생각과 하나님을 떠난 욕망으로 이렇게 신앙에 또 허물을 갖게 되었고 여러 가지로 마음에 또 상처도 받고 시험을 얻어 여러 가지로 연약한 가운데 있을 수도 있습니다 하나님 도와주시고 우리 성들이 각각 차들의 심령에 원하는 바와 같이 심령에 구하는 모든 것을 아시오니 하나님 들어주시옵시고 저들의 음성을 귀히 여기시며 또 극률한 마음으로 돌보아 주시고 저들 영혼을 깨끗하게 해 주시기 원합니다 모든 영혼들이 다 하나님 앞에 정직하게 나와 하나도 위선하는 자 없이 정직한 마음과 또 우리 하나님의 온전한 100% 우리 하나님의 귀한 은혜와 극률로서 힘입고 옷을 입고 하나님 앞에 예배 드릴 수 있는 깨끗한 심령들 다 되도록 역사하시고 도와주시옵소서 어떤 원수들도 틈타지 못하고 우리 성, 성도들을 공격하지 못하고 방해하지 못하도록 하나님 도와주시고 이 시간을 역사해 주셔서 우리 모든 영혼들이 정말 우리 하나님의 거룩하시고 우리 하나님의 깨끗하시고 우리 하나님의 순전하신 같이 다 순전하게 하여 주시옵소서 예수 이름 받도록 참여 기도 드리옵나이다 아멘God the Father, on this holy day that you have blessed and commanded, we give you thanks in this worship. You have called us by the name of Jesus, and we have bowed down now before the name of Jesus. We pray we may worship you in the spirit and in the truth. We pray that you would accept us. We pray that we may come and meet with you. We have come before you and you have called us in spirit. We pray that you would uh, accept us. And in this world, uh, amongst this world, you have given us your blessings and have separated us. We repent for not, for have not done your will. And we repent for 
not obeying your word, we pray that you'd forgive us of our sins. We pray that in offering this true worship, we pray that you would uh, do the work of reconstructing this church. We pray that all the saints gathered here may succeed in their worship. Holy Father, you who are full of love, we pray that you would be with us as we sit before you. And as we sit before you, we pray that you continue to lead us. And in this time when we worship you, we pray for the sake of the senior overseer who preaches your word, that you may fill him with the wisdom and knowledge of the word of God. We pray for the sake of the overseer, uh, Pastor Song Young Kim, who leads this, uh, the, re the direction of this church. We pray that in all the directions that the church goes, that you'll protect us and keep us firm. We pray for the sake of the senior overseer, that you may sustain his health and that you may sustain him in his flesh to continue to do the work of God. We pray that just as he testifies to your word, you may anoint him by the Holy Spirit with the wisdom and knowledge and power of the word of God. We pray to all those who hear the word of God that they may, that they may receive grace. We pray that they may obey your word. They may uh, bow down in obedience to you and they may have the victory. We pray that particularly by your great power and in accordance with your commandment when you have commanded us to keep uh, the Lord's the Lord's Supper, we pray uh, that as we come to remember it, we come to remember the life that you have given us through your flesh and your blood. We pray that we may continue to preach uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ until he comes again. And during this time when this church is enduring difficulties, we pray that we may solve all problems and hardships and we may continue to be Sangwak people who please you. And we pray that in this worship, that your kingdom and your your kingdom and your righteousness may be manifested. We pray in this name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Sogna giù, ma, sogna giù, ma, sogna giù, ma, sogna giù. Hallelujah! Let us encourage each other and uh, encourage each other to protect the church and to defend the church. Holy God the Father, on this holy and precious day, we come before you in worship. We pray that all your grace uh, and blessings uh, to those who have been to those who have received it, and in response they have given their holy offerings to you. They have uh, they have given these offerings in obedience to you. We pray for those souls who have given their holy construction offerings. We pray that you'd help them and the souls of their families. We pray that you'd remember these souls and the souls of their families to those who have given their tithes. They do not live according to the method of the world, but according to the method of God. We pray that you would remember all, each and every one of their souls. We pray for those who have, give, who have given their monthly offerings to you. They have done this in remembrance of your body, which is the church. They desire to serve you. We pray that you remember their families and support them with your great power. We pray for those souls who have given their thanks offerings to you. We pray that your great power and working may continue to support them. And uh, we pray that you may answer and remember all those prayers that they pray to you and that you fulfill uh, the deep desires of their hearts. We pray that you would help them in the fullness of their souls. We pray all these words in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. May God bless in the souls and in the souls of their families of those who have given out of thanksgiving their holy offerings to God and may it be done in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen.
송주감. The Pine Bamboo Rock Address. 예전에는 왜 인간인 줄을 알지 못했다가 우리 주 예수를 만나고서는 Before my spirit came to know Jesus Christ, I pursue the desires of my flesh. But now that my spirit is alive, I desire I pursue the desires of my spirit. This is why I always use the phrase my spirit. My spirit is alive only in Jesus Christ. It lives by the word of God and receives guidance by the Holy Spirit. This is the glory of becoming a child of God. But as time has passed, the devil has somehow planted weeds in my spirit and weeds are continuing to grow there. Within my spirit, there should only be the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. But instead of these, there is grief, anger, a desire to take revenge, sufferings and sadness. They have all grown like weeds within me. These things are not the desires of my spirit, but they all belong clearly to the devil. When I open my eyelids to face the day, the voices that instantly come to hinder me are the voices coming from these weeds. To de the desire to hate and have malice towards others beat against my spirit like the autumn wind. Because of this wind, my spirit is drying up. While I live in this world, I have taught all that I can teach and I have done all that I can possibly do. All that I yearn for is not the promotion of my flesh, but for my spirit to do the work of God by the Holy Spirit. Right now, my spirit is full of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that comes out from God. But my flesh is eroding and I cannot sustain my vitality. My days are coming to completion until that final day I am persevering again and again. One must endure without end in order to gain the victory. There is only one who can vindicate my spirit. He is our God. He is Jesus Christ. God is the highest attainable uh, hope, not only for my flesh, but also for my spirit. Just who is God? He is Jesus Christ. He came from heaven, was raised in Jerusalem, and and receive the testimony that he was the son of man he is god and he is the son of man the world can laugh at this but i am blessed because i know god because i am i believe in him and because i love him i am truly blessed our god is the son of man and he dwells in heaven The Word of God is found in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. Let us read together. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God. To obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and spirit. And it is the spirit who testifies, for the spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood. 
and the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which He has given about His Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. Amen. So that we may honestly receive the word of God, let us pray. Let us also pray uh, for the sake of the senior overseer. Let us pray that we may, in equal inspiration, may receive this holy word with equal inspiration. Let us pray that we may be full of the power of God. Let us pray together right now. God the Father, on this holy day that you have commanded us, you have called us, you have called us to you and you have called us to be holy. We pray that you may anoint the lips of your servant that you may personally anoint it and that through this anointing we may all enjoy your blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Salvation has a testimony. Let us read the sermon outline together. Salvation, salvation has a testimony. God is completely perfect. For Him to fulfill the plan of salvation for mankind, He sent His Son into the world. He came by water, He came by blood, and He came by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, these three, three agree as one. This is the testimony of our faith. Whoever believes in Jesus has this testimony within him. The one who has this testimony has life. The one who does not have this testimony does not have life. Our faith is not a religion because the truth is without falsehood. It has a testimony. Things that go beyond the truth do not have a testimony. We possess the faith that has a testimony. This testimony is a real experience. The Holy Spirit has given us this experience by His power. The blood of Jesus has overcome the law of Moses and Jesus has abolished the law's authority. He has given us freedom by His blood. The Holy Spirit has overcome the devil and the Holy Spirit has overcome the devil's authority. The Holy Spirit has given us freedom by the truth. Baptism overcomes the desires of the flesh and it pushes back the sinful emotions that come from the flesh. Baptism only leads us in the direction of the sign of the resurrection. The only thing which will overcome the world, the devil and the desires of the flesh is the testimony of our faith. Let us let go of religion which has no experience through the Holy Spirit and hold to faith. We must know that God is completely perfect. He is, he is the perfect one without flaw. He is without errors. There is no regret with God. He has no sin. He has no falsehood within him. There is nothing that he cannot do 
There is nothing that he cannot accomplish. He is the one who has perfectly free will. He is he is the free the free one. He has perfectly free will. He sent his son to the world so, so that through the son the world can gain salvation. So the salvation that God gives us is not is not a doctrine but it, it is a testimony that has that is experienced. We possess the faith that is experienced. The faith of experience. If there is no testimony, if there is no faith that has no testimony and that cannot be experienced, then this is not true faith. So what is the difference between the law and the gospel? The law is the regulations for the flesh, is the regulations and rules for the flesh. And so we know that the flesh has has senses and nerves. And so uh, it can receive physical testimony. However, the spirit of man has no uh, has no faculty of senses. So no matter what kind of uh, comfort or promotion the flesh gains by the keeping of the law of Moses, although the flesh can receive blessings uh, through the keeping of the law of Moses, the law cannot give salvation to the spirit of man. It is because the law is merely the regulations and rules for the flesh. Only the flesh will live. It will survive and will, it will have food to eat. Therefore, we say that it has blessings. And we can say that this is a sort of salvation. However, if you do not keep the law of Moses, you'll be cursed. You'll be cursed. You will not have the food to eat. You'll be cursed in your flesh. So this is what uh, fulfilling the requirements of the law results in. Only the satisfaction of the senses and desires of the flesh. And this has to do with bodily senses. However, the Christian faith does not is not related is not related to the satisfaction of the bodily senses but for the for the satisfaction of the spirit of man and so the new commandment given through Jesus is not a regulation of the flesh but it is the truth it is the truth given to the spirit so the truth is a testimony for the salvation of the spirit of man. So the spirit of man does not have any senses in the same way that the bodily flesh does. And so the question is, has the soul, has the spirit received salvation or not? We do not call what we can see with our eyes and what we can touch with our hands as salvation. That is why we live by faith. And there is a testimony to this faith. It is to know that which cannot be known. And this is known by faith. And this, and a testimony is given for the sake of this faith. It has nothing to do with the regulations of the flesh, uh, as was found in the law of Moses, as found in the Old Testament. And so, in accordance with bodily senses, it concerned the seeing of the eyes, the hearing of the ears, and the touch that can be sensed by the flesh, by the hands. Those under the law of Moses, as found in the Old Testament, 
The law indeed came from God. And the people of Israel received this law of Moses as an inheritance. By this law of Moses, you can be holy. You can do good works. And the regulations were so detailed and minute that it could have it could give regulations for all sorts of things, whether it be in the fam in the household or uh, concerning uh, buildings, buildings in the household, furniture. It concerned with all things, anything that can be imagined in the flesh. There was there was regulations. It was merely composed of instructions, commandments, um, even to the minutest detail of what commanded the people of Israel to keep. And so the people in the building of the tabernacle to serve God, they did exactly as was commanded by them through the word of God, given through Moses. And so even the commandment of keeping the Sabbath, accordance with this commandment, one could not even walk more than, say, a hundred meters. And so if there were preparations that, to be, that were to be made, it was to be done on the day before uh, the holy day, the Sabbath. So this was all the... Cons all the it was all consisting of regulations for the satisfaction of the flesh. So we can compare this with meeting an elder of the family or an elder person of the society. You would you would wear you would wear the most respectful clothes. You would wear res respectful clothes and the most uh, pleasing appearance in terms in terms of clothing and so forth so on the outside it would be without flaw it would be without error but this does not concern anything to do with the inside uh, concerning the spirit so those under the law of Moses as found in the Old Testament uh, their flesh would live they would have food to sustain this flesh and if they at any moment did not keep the regulations for the flesh as commanded by Moses, they would be cursed. They would they would suffer the lack it lack and shortage of food and they would in the end die. So Jesus said by his word, he spoke by his word, I do not judge by the outer appearance. But in accordance with the law of Moses, one indeed was judged according to the outer appearance, and that alone. And so they were judged according to the outer appearance of the flesh, whether there were flaws or not. But Jesus spoke by his word when he said, I do not judge by appearances. So I accept and I see the Spirit. I see the Spirit. There is no one who has seen the Spirit or who, or who can see the Spirit with the eyes of the flesh. There is no uh, emotions in the Spirit as the, the fleshly body has emotions. So the emotions and sensations of the flesh have to do only with the bodily flesh. It has nothing to do with the Spirit. And so the regulations, regulations of the flesh came through the law that came from Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. As, this was, as it is recorded in John chapter 1 verse 17. So Jesus does not judge by outer appearance. And Jesus again spoke by his word when he said, God his spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. So God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. So the law consisted only of regulations and standards for the flesh.
그래서 율법하는 자들은 음식을 So it only concerned the outer appearance, outer appearance, outer regulations. Rules concerning the outer body. It concerned nothing about the inside. And so this was the law. And this was the requirements that the law demanded. It was completely legalistic. It was strictly legal. And so one could not have uh, irregular uh, sexual, sexual regulations because the law of Moses has stated not to. So in the same way, so all issues concerning, concerning our human life, these were all dealt with in the law of Moses. However, in the new commandment, in the new, in the new, in the new testament, came the new commandment spoken by Jesus. And in this new commandment, this new commandment does not judge according to the outer appearance, but concerns only are the issues of the spirit of man. So, within uh, the spirit of a man, there is no desires. Or oh, there is no um, bodily sensations. So in the Christian church, if there is someone, uh, the reason that one does whatever they desire and whatever they want to do is because there is no proper teacher to teach them how to live their life of Christian faith. And so, having not been thus uh, educated in the word of God, they will um, point fingers at each other, they will condemn each other, and they will slander each other. And what is the reason for this? Because they are looking at the outer appearance. And they only preoccupy themselves with how the outer appearance uh, shows itself. And so if, it, if there is a, a pleasant outer appearance, then they think that this is, they are living a successful faith, life of faith. But this is completely related to the law of Moses. So in the, the New Testament, in the New Testament it was stated that Jesus would sit down and what does this sim what does this sim uh, symbolize? It means that uh, they would uh, sit down to be taught the word of God. And so it was stated, Jesus sat down. It, it signified that he would speak his word and his disciples would receive this word. This was his uh, complete contrast to the law of Moses where, where they would appear very austere, very uh, godly. But in the end, Jesus spoke by his word. God does not judge by outer appearance. God is spirit and he has given his new commandment. Which does not uh, which does not judge by the outer appearance. Because God is truth. God speaks the word of truth. So when we worship in spirit, you may try and you will find it is very difficult. So they will try to keep the outer the outer requirements of the law that the law demands. They would do this in the law of Moses and they thought, and then one might think that they can do this, perhaps they can. But when they come to the new commandment and strive to uh, worship in spirit, this has nothing to do with emotions or desires. This concerns faith, the commandment of faith. You worship by faith. 
in the law of Moses, you can do nothing but uh, commit hypocrisy. You can only end up as being hypocrites. So in the law of Moses, because it concerned nothing but the regulations and rules of the flesh, this has nothing but uh, that which has to do with hypocrisy concerning the outer and nothing concerning the inner aspects. And this is what those who belong to the law of Moses uh, resulted in being. And so Jesus spoke uh, by his word. He condemned those who were typically under the law. Who were they who were typically under the law? The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were completely perfect in accordance with the commands of the law of Moses. And yet, uh, Jesus came and he spoke his word to say, I do not judge by the outer appearance. And so we worship in spirit. And so the truth does not judge by the outer appearance, but it worships in spirit. It worships in the spirit and in the truth. And so many people, because they are not able to do these things, they will, uh, they will be grieved and they will, and they will have much, um, much confusion because they cannot seem to do it. They cannot seem to worship in spirit. They cannot seem to serve God in spirit. They will be perplexed and confused because they do not know how to do so. They still think that it is something to do with the flesh. They try to exert unnatural tears, unnatural acts of religious devotion. It is by faith. One does this by faith. Nothing to do with human emotions. Nothing to do with the emotions of the flesh. A Jesus has crucified the flesh with his requirements and desires by his death and crucifixion on the cross. You do not do anything with human emotions. Human emotions has all to do with religious mysticism. Uh, I'm, I apologize uh, for anybody, for anybody, uh, perhaps in um, who who sing, who sing in the choir, who serve in the choir. But when Christianity first came to South to South Korea, the state of Christianity was in great um, uh, a great low because in the in the Christian Church. And it was suffering a great um, a great low in their zeal and service to God. And so they introduced they introduced um, introduced a new and innovative praise and hymns. But can these concern the emotions? These concern the emotions of the flesh. And so, and so within, uh, and so there can be a distinction between those hymns and praise that have emotion emotions that have lyrics that arouse emotions and lyrics that do not necessarily seek to arouse emotions so there is a difference uh, that is within the contents of the lyrics that which arouses uh, seeks only to arouse emotions and that which does not necessarily need to do so 
And so this arousing and this great need to arouse emotions has, uh, has to do with religious mysticism. It has nothing to do with the truth. What we seek is the truth. We seek to worship by spirit. It has nothing to do with the regulations and demands of the law of Moses, but to do with the requirement and demand for faith. Faith in Jesus. It is faith that is required. Faith in the word of God. So, uh, you can you can uh, compare this with the relationship between a married woman and, ma and man. This is not necessarily to do with emotions, but with a real and true relationship. It has nothing to do with emotions, but concerns faith, a faithful relationship. So concerning faith, there is no there is no emotions needed in faith. And so what what accompanies true faith? It is testimony, true testimony. True testimony accompanies true faith. So God has given us faith. And what is the testimony, the proof of this faith? It is the Holy Spirit. It is water, blood, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are in agreement because it is the Holy Spirit that gives the testimony. He who has the testimony of the Holy Spirit has life. He who does not have the testimony of the Holy Spirit does not have life. One needs to have the testimony that comes from the Holy Spirit. Faith will always have a, f have a testimony by the Holy Spirit. And so it is written in the last portions of the book of, the book of Mark. And so the, and so the disciples uh, went around preaching the gospel and the Lord accompanied, accompanied them by his working and by his testimonies that he gave them to accompany them as he went as they went around to preach the gospel and so people will commonly think that the water as found in the bible concerns the word of god and so they will think this that the word that the water found in the bible concerns the word of god no, the Bible consists of truth. It does not consist, or the New Testament does not consist of any parables or symbols. You must not confuse that the words of the New Testament concern any symbols or parables. It concerns only truth, word of truth. The truth has nothing to do with symbols or parables. The word is the word and nothing more. It needs not to be interpreted. The word of truth as found in the New Testament does not need to be interpreted. So John chapter 3 verse 4 says, If anyone, if anyone does not, is not born of the Holy Spirit and water, will not be born again. And so, and so people try to interpret this word of truth and so uh, even preachers today in today's Christian churches they are confused and they are not even sure whether they are speaking the words of truth or words describing symbols or parables and so it's once again it is said in John chapter 1 verse 17 the law came through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ the law of Moses consisted only of regulations and rituals, ritualistic laws of the flesh to regulate the flesh. But now the Holy Spirit has come to us and he speaks only the words of truth. But one must not, uh, one must not mistakenly interpret this in any kind of symbolic way or any, any way of a parable. No. 
It is cl clearly stated in the book of in the book of Peter, in the books of Peter, that water symbolizes baptism, and this baptism is is a uh, baptism in the name of Jesus that doesn't clean the flesh but cleans the spirit. So, in the past, in the historical past, there was the Roman Catholic Church, and they would publicly and historically decree that baptism was only a ritual and nothing more. But this is not the case. Baptism in the name of Jesus is truth. Baptism given in the name of Jesus is truth. It is because of the sake of the truth, giving baptism in the name of Jesus as the truth that I was on religious trials in the religious law courts in the Presbyterian Church and in the Methodist Church and so forth. I, I was judged in the denominational courts and and again because of the truth. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church and many other denominations, they, they see baptism as a mere ritual. But baptism in the name of Jesus is to be seen as the truth. And so people will try to rationalize baptism and they will say that baptism uh, concerns only uh, mere unimportant rituals, regulations and rituals. But baptism, that is baptism in, in immersion, fully in immersion, in the, given in the name of Jesus Christ, is, is the sign of our salvation, that we have gone in and out of the water and we have been thus united with Jesus Christ. And so, Jesus spoke by his word, John gave baptism in water of repentance, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so, um, so, and so Paul would later speak to some of some disciples, and they would he would ask them, "Did you receive the bap Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized?" They didn't know of it, but Paul taught them about receiving baptism in immersion in the name of Jesus. So once we have received baptism in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ that is baptism by the Holy Spirit you will finally understand why Jesus had to die and resurrect concerning sin and righteousness and judgment So once again uh, sin Sin and death, sin and death, they are, they are intertwined, they are connected, they cannot be separated. So sin, even as found in the law of Moses, it concerns death. It concerns, it concerns death. So what is the power of the law? It is sin. That which powers the law of Moses is sin. And so the end result of the law of Moses the end result of sin is death. So that which powers the law of Moses is sin. And so the fruit, the end fruit of sin is death. And so the power of the law is, the authority of the law is sin. And so the authority of sin the one who has authority over sin is the devil. And so God spoke by his word in the book of the uh, the account of, of the creation. For the moment you eat of this fruit, you will die. And this referred to the spirit of man going straight to hell. It will be judged immediately. The moment one eats of the fruit, the spirit of man will die. And so, having man, having eaten this fruit, it died. And so, man went to hell and was thus judged. 
And so man, in this way, uh, was to go to hell. But you must, you must know carefully. What no one has gone to hell yet. No one has gone to hell yet. The sentence of receiving death has been announced, but one has not actually entered into hell. It is when Jesus comes again, and then he gives judgment, and then all this sentencing will be fully fulfilled. So before going into death, going into the lake of death, Jesus must come again. A Jesus, and Jesus did come again. He died and resurrected. So it is the Son of God. The Son of God went into the tomb. He went into Hades. He went into Hades. He went into Hades, that is, the Son of God. He came to receive punishment. He came to, he came to receive it. He came to die. And so Jesus spoke by his word, but I have a baptism to receive, and how distressed I am until I received it. How distressed I am until I receive this baptism. And this was talking about the death, about the death that Jesus was to endure. And so this death, or the or baptism, it referred to being buried. It referred to being buried. It referred to being buried. So when one was in the flesh, uh, he offered out prayers and petitions with loud, loud cries and petitions and loud tears and earnest tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was hard because of his reverent submission. And why, why did he pray with loud cries and tears? Because he was going to die. He came to die. He came to die and to receive punishment. And in the end, he did die. And this was the baptism that he received. And so the receiving uh, of baptism that Jesus received, uh, this is again connected with the baptism that we receive. And when we receive our own baptism in immersion in the name of Jesus Christ, we are being united with the death and resurrection of Jesus. We have been united with Jesus. And so... And so one will ask, they will ask, uh, does anybody really have to receive baptism in immersion to be saved? Can't you just believe? But you must know that Jesus Christ came to die. Jesus did receive his baptism, so you must receive yours. Jesus was the one, Jesus one who was righteous, he had no sins, yet he still came to die. He came to die and suffer death in the flesh. And so when Jesus, and when Jesus was on the cross, there was even a criminal who asked, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And then Jesus spoke by his word of promise, I promise you, you will go with me into paradise. And so, and so when we go down into the water in baptism and immersion in the name of Jesus Christ, we are being united with his death and resurrection. We are relying on his death. So, our baptism in immersion, when we go into the water, uh, we are being connected and united with His death and resurrection. 
And having received this baptism in the name of Jesus, we have buried, we have buried the old man of the flesh that belonged to the flesh. We have got, we have gotten rid of the flesh. We have been cut off with the old man, the old man that belonged to the flesh. We are shed ourselves of it. So this is how important baptism in immersion is. So when we go into the water, we go into the death of Jesus and come up with the life of Jesus. And so after this, after this, we have the duty to drink of the blood of Jesus and to eat of the flesh of Jesus. And, and having done this, we can participate in the resurrection. Just as Romans chapter 8 states, and it is, and if, if the Spirit, if the Spirit of Him who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, if this Spirit abides in your spirit, then He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to you through His Spirit who abides in your own spirit. So these three must, we must keep hold absolutely to these three. So, the water, the blood, and by the Holy Spirit. So, what is the testimony? By water, blood, and test, and by the Holy Spirit. These three. And water. This refers to baptism by immersion. This refers to baptism in immersion. This, uh, baptism in immersion. Blood and the Holy Spirit. These three. You must hold to these, these united one testimony. So what is the testimony of your true faith? Water, which refers to baptism. Blood and the Holy Spirit. You must not forget this. But you must understand this. Know this by faith. By faith, not, not of the strength of the flesh or of the regulations of the flesh, but by faith. And there will be a testimony that will accompany this faith by the testimony of the Holy Spirit. So ask yourself, have you received baptism by immersion in the name of Jesus? That is the question. Have you drunken also of his blood? Have you received, have you received the forgiveness of sins? through the blood of Jesus? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you received Holy Spirit? It is the Holy Spirit who testifies to the truth. So Romans chapter 8 states, and so the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. And so if we are children of God, we are heirs, co-heirs with Christ, that we may go to the Father with Christ. And so, and so, and so if, Jesus, if God has saved Jesus from the dead by the Holy Spirit, so he will also give life to us through the Holy Spirit. And so having entered into baptism, we have shed ourselves of the sin of the past, of the man of the past. We have shed ourselves completely through entering into this baptism. And now we have entered into righteousness, having gone into and out of the water of baptism. And so, um, in the same way that it takes uh, roughly nine months for a child uh, to remain in the mother's womb and then go out, so we must enter into the water of baptism. And after having done this, we can go into the resurrection. 
So concerning the desires of the flesh, in the in the human flesh, there are said to be many thousands of viruses found within the flesh. And these are not just bad, they are also good viruses. And good uh, these good viruses, bacteria, will fight against uh, the harmful bacteria. And so, and so even scientists will go to research uh, the genetic fabric the genetic fabric of the bacteria and the virus found within the body. And so, and so this scientific research will go on and on. And this is only the beginning. They will never fully, they, there will always be much more to research. And so we can see the scope of potential diseases. How can one find out all these things? Can you gain eternal life from it? Can you enter into the resurrection? What we are desiring to do is go into the resurrection. So how can we go into the resurrection? So, uh, in the same way that scientists try to dissect and gain some results, gain some good, good things out of uh, the dissection of viruses, so in the same way, in a similar way, Jesus has shed his blood for us. Jesus has shed his flesh for us so that we can gain life. And so, if uh, this if this surgery is not successful, uh, we might say, we cannot have life. So, we must eat of the flesh of Jesus and drink of the blood of Jesus to enter into the resurrection. Baptism in the name of Jesus by immersion is no ritual. It is truth. It is a commandment. So if you have received baptism by immersion in Jesus' name, say Amen. If you have drunken of the blood of Jesus, say Amen. If you are now qualified to enter into the resurrection, say Amen. And so it is the one, the one who testifies is the Holy Spirit. You must receive and hold to the testimony given by the Holy Spirit. Nothing to do with religious mystics who are preoccupied with all sorts of emotions. But we, we seek to be full of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that we are full of the Holy Spirit. So pray that you may receive the testimony to your faith. Receive this testimony by the Holy Spirit to your faith. Holy Father, we pray that we may have faith and also have the testimony. So, just as we obey your command uh, and share in the Lord's Supper, we pray that we may uh, recognize and remember your flesh and your blood that you gave us. And just as you have already enabled us to participate in the resurrection, we pray that uh, as we do this, 
We pray that you be with us as we commemorate your flesh and your blood. So, even if you die, you must not forget remembering the flesh and blood of Jesus. You must continue to eat the flesh of Jesus and His blood. Anyone, this is the very reason why you are, why one is one is uh, recommended not to receive baptism in, immer in immersion in the name of Jesus if one does not recognize the flesh of Jesus within him and the blood of Jesus within him. One must always at all costs receive baptism by immersion in Jesus' name. Receive the testimony of your faith. Receive the testimony to your faith to accompany it. There must be There must be an accompanying testimony to your faith There must be an accompanying testimony You must receive this testimony He who has this testimony has life
성도 여러분 자리에서 일어서 주시기 바랍니다. Beloved saints, let us all stand together. 이제는 may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all those who are come here to worship and who are hearing this message. Be, may it be with them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, uh, the opportunity to receive baptism in accordance with the commandment will be made available as if anybody wishes to come forward. And, uh, and let us all um, continue uh, to, do, to do all that is needed to protect the church and to prevent all those hindrances uh, that give destruction and harm to the church. Let us receive, be comforted with the comfort that comes from God. Uh, thank you very much.